This is a fire sprinkler head, a key component of a fire sprinkler system. It releases water when a fire is detected. In this video, we'll examine the main components and explore the inner workings to see how it operates. Fire sprinkler heads have evolved significantly since their inception more than 150 years ago. In 1874, Henry S. Parmalee patented the first practical automated sprinkler head, which activated when exposed to heat. Parmalee was the owner of a piano factory and was looking to permanently lower his company's skyrocketing fire insurance premiums. After unsuccessful negotiations with his insurer, he took matters into his own hands and spent years developing a fire suppression system for his factory. Now let's take a look at the working principle of Henry S. Permalee's first patented fire sprinkler head. The sprinkler head was designed with a hollow chamber containing numerous holes, allowing pressurized water to shoot out in multiple streams. Below this chamber, there's a valve disc that prevents water from entering the chamber. The valve stem extends upward to a cap at the top. The valve is held closed by a tension spring wrapped around the sprinkler body and attached to the cap through a fusible eye. This eye is made from a material that melts at a relatively low temperature. The force exerted by the spring is slightly greater than the force exerted by the water pushing on the valve disc, ensuring the valve remains closed. If a fire breaks out, the heat generated by the fire progressively melts the eye, releasing the spring's pressure on the valve. This allows water to push the valve up, flow into the chamber, and spray out in streams. To prevent the water jets from one sprinkler from hitting the fusible eye of an adjacent sprinkler and potentially delaying its melting, the cap extends downward. Sprinklers may drip due to valve leaks. Each sprinkler is equipped with a cup underneath to catch these drips, which can be wiped off or left to evaporate. Unfortunately, this first sprinkler head was complicated and never known to have been used. Now let's return to the modern day sprinkler head. Before we dive in, can you guess what the biggest misconception about fire sprinklers is? I'll give you a hint. You often see that misconception represented in movies. Watch till the end of this video to find out if you're right. And in the meantime, drop your guesses in the comments below. Each sprinkler head is strategically placed throughout a building and connected to a network of pipes that supply pressurized water. This is the deflector, a small metal plate at the end of the sprinkler's body. It dispenses the water in a specific spray pattern to maximize coverage. There are several sprinkler head types designed for specific applications, each using a different deflector. Let's explore the two most common types available. The pendant sprinkler head is the most common type. It is installed hanging down from the ceiling pipes and directs water downward in a conical spray pattern using a convex deflector. The upright sprinkler head is installed with the deflector up and directs water upward and outward in a dome pattern using a concave deflector. Pendant sprinkler heads are used in areas where the ceiling is accessible, while upright types are commonly used where the ceiling is not accessible. This is the glass bulb, the active element of the sprinkler head. The bulb is filled with a glycerin-based liquid that expands when heated causing the bulb to break at a certain temperature. Inside, there's an air bubble to allow for some expansion of the liquid without immediately causing the bulb to break. Glass bulbs are most commonly available in two sizes, the 5 mm diameter for a standard response time and the 3 mm diameter for a quicker response time. The liquid inside these glass bulbs is color-coded to indicate the temperature rating. Here are the most common colors and their corresponding temperature ratings. These color codes help in quickly identifying the temperature rating of the sprinkler head. The most common glass bulb color is red that breaks at 68 Celsius or 155 Fahrenheit. This is the plug. It holds back the water inside the pipe and is held in place by the glass bulb. Now let's see how the sprinkler works. When a fire starts, it quickly increases the surrounding air temperature. As the hot air rises and reaches the sprinkler head, the liquid inside the bulb begins to expand. As the air temperature increases, the liquid expands until it completely fills the bulb, eliminating the air bubble, 
Once fully expanded, the pressure exerted by the liquid causes the glass bulb to burst, releasing the plug, allowing water to flow out of the sprinkler head. The deflector disperses the water, suppressing the fire. There are two main types of fire sprinkler systems, wet pipe and dry pipe systems. In a wet pipe sprinkler system, the pipes are always filled with pressurized water. When a sprinkler head is activated, the water immediately flows out to extinguish the fire, providing a fast reaction time. Wet pipe systems are commonly used in areas where temperatures do not drop below freezing, as the water in the pipes could freeze. Dry pipe sprinkler systems store pressurized air or nitrogen in the pipes instead of water. When the sprinkler head is activated, the air pressure drops, a valve opens and releases water into the pipes. The water then flows through the open sprinkler head onto the fire. Dry pipe systems have slower reaction times and are typically used in areas prone to freezing, such as parking garages or warehouses. Both types of systems operate on the same principle of using heat to trigger the individual sprinkler heads. As promised, it's time to reveal the biggest misconception about fire sprinklers. Contrary to popular belief and what you may have seen in movies, not all sprinkler heads activate simultaneously when a fire is detected. As you've learned in this video, sprinkler heads are designed to activate individually in response to local heat from a fire, which helps minimize water damage. I am so happy we made this video. Every time I was watching one of those videos, one of those movies where a guy literally just like gets up on a chair with a lighter and puts a lighter towards the sprinkler and then basically the entire building just gets uh, flooded with water. Every time my brain just refused to brain it and I didn't think about looking in further and asking the question, why? I always wondered how come we don't have any systems in place that will prevent that. So gladly this video kind of clarified it for us and hopefully clarified it for you as well. If you're new here on Deconstructed, I want to say welcome. We are a two-person duo and we make everything that you see here by hand. We deconstruct, we model, and we animate the entire process to give you the most detailed videos, which means that every simple five-minute animation that you see on here takes us weeks and sometimes even months to create. Believe it or not, your support makes a huge difference. Leaving a like on this video, a comment, and even sharing it with a friend goes a very, very long way and allows us to continue making these videos and making them more frequently. Also, if you enjoy our channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can support our channel and also get access to exclusive perks. And as always, if you found this video informative and helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you for being part of our journey.